Meine Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen im Lembach Haus. Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to Lembach Haus. We have two seats in the second row. Anybody? It's a long ceremony. <laughs> yeah, please, our dear colleagues have nice seats in the second row. And uh, I will speak in English and a little mixture of Germany and um, the ceremony, uh, the Laudatio and the artist talk will be held in English. And it is my, uh, uh, it is a great pleasure and an honor to welcome Sheila Gauda uh, to Lembach House, the second artist to whom the Maria Lasnik Prize uh, is awarded. Welcome, Sheila. That is actually so great about the Munich audience. They, they come and, um, and they're happy about what we're doing. And who's, yeah, it's, I worked in many cities. It's a, I, I love the audience here. And I, of course, uh, welcome Christoph Storz. And I uh, welcome uh, our dear colleague from uh, uh, Milano, Vicente Todoli who is the director of Hanga Bicocca and is hosting the current Sheila Gauda show, which will be the biggest Sheila Gauda show ever in the history of this planet. As, <laughs> and it is the biggest art space uh, I, I know. And um, however, I welcome my uh, colleague Nuria Enguita, um, who is hosting the next Sheila Gauda show, which happens to be in Valencia in Spain, from uh, Bombas Gens Art Center, and uh, thank you for coming. And I welcome Sera Jumaboy, who is here from the Courthold Institute in London, and uh, who will report uh, this event uh, to the papers in India. Thank you for coming. And uh, I, of course, won't say that much uh, about uh, Sheila Gauda, as we invited another dear colleague from far away, um, Ute Meta Bauer, uh, the founding director of the Center for Contemporary Art in Singapore, and of course, uh, well known in Germany as for her part at the doc uh, Documenta uh, 11. She was curator there together with Okvi and Wesor. And she was the curator of uh, the Berlin Bi Biennial, the third one. And uh, before uh, she moved to Singapore, she was uh, a professor at the MIT in Cambridge. And I won't say the state where Cambridge is in, because Germans cannot pronounce it. <laughs> and um, she is very important for us, as she's not only doing the Laudatia, she nominated Sheila Gauda for the Maria Lasnik Prize. She brought her on the list, so, so it's uh, very important that you're with us tonight and that you're helping us in celebrating Sheila. Thank you for coming. And of course, I welcome my very dear colleague, Peter Pakesh, the chairman of the board of the Maria Lasnik Foundation, whose complete idea uh, ideas are, were moving into the foundation and the prize. And so I won't say that much about the prize because uh, Peter will held, held the uh, award ceremony in itself and say something about the prize and the jury and so on. Last not, but not least, I welcome Hans Ulrich Obrist, who is like in, in many functions here tonight. He is the artistic director of the Serpentine Galleries in London and he is on the advisory board of the Maria Lasnik Foundation. And he was a member uh, of the jury uh, for this prize, and of course he worked with Sheila uh, before in several projects. So, in the end we will have uh, an artist talk, and after that we will have a reception in the most beautiful museum on the planet, the garden of the Limbach House, and thanks to whoever did something about it. Thanks very much for the wonderful weather. And thank you uh, very much, Aqua Monaco, which is uh, a partner 
of everything we need uh, to drink in this evening. And as we not only have cocktails and water, we will have wine too. So I thank very much to Weinhof Schal, who will um, um, contribute uh, for, to the reception. And of course, uh, the reception itself is a joint venture between Lembach House and the Maria Lasnik uh, Foundation. So, who is next? That is uh, my colleague Ute Mitterbauer for the Laudatio. I wish you a very interesting evening and a wonderful reception in our garden in honor to Sheila Gauda. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthias, <laughs> for the welcome. Uh, yeah, welcome everybody, but also um, welcome Sheila to Munich and um, also my dear colleagues who are here. I'm very humbled to have been invited to doing this laudato. It's actually my first one. And uh, Vincente totally irritated me quite a bit uh, this, this lunch when he said uh, a good speech should not be longer than 40 seconds. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I tried to find my bearings within that. And then Hans Ulrich introduced another uh, threatening a line, and that's all the, the speeches that failed. Uh, so, so, but, uh, so let's see what we can do. I mean, we are here tonight to really celebrate and to honor uh, a great, great um, artist, a female artist, and it's still um, sometimes necessary to point that out, and it's actually to celebrate uh, two female artists. Um, we actually begin with uh, the amazing Maria Lasnik. Uh, Maria um, has been, she would have been 100 years old um, this year, so it's indeed an amazing year. And um, yeah, you are surrounded by her works and that of the late Martin Kippenberger. And um, Maria is very interesting and, and I think it's, I'm not an expert of uh, neither of the two. I'm neither an art historian either, so don't expect an uh, art historical explanation of uh, Sheila's work. I hope this will happen in the show that will be created in March by Eva Huttenlauch here, and uh, I think you will hear more about the work, but I think today is also to celebrate um, what artists who embark on a very particular life, on a very self-determined life, in particular uh, a life that female artists embark to, uh, to discuss this a little bit and to really look into these out outstanding achievements. And I also spoke with Hans Ulrich before, who has been actually very um, important for both of these artists. He know Maria Lasnik. Uh, also from his young age on, and also he met uh, Sheila very early on when he worked on the Indian Highway. And I think it's, it's really important in what moment we also embark to meet these artists when they find their own bearings and their own work. And I just want to mention that uh, I met, I had heard of Maria Lasnik before I actually met her, because a number of my friends who were actually filmmakers, animation filmmakers, were students of her. And so I was also thought in the beginning she's an animation filmmaker. She has been the first uh, female professor at the University of Applied Arts to teach uh, also this genre. And although she initially studied painting, she went on to New York and study animation film at the School of Visual Arts. And um, so it's very interesting how also Maria was this multidisciplinary artist and uh, who really moved and worked across uh, many disciplines. And what is so outstanding also on Maria is um, her wit and her humor. And I hope you also watched the film that I had the pleasure to see this afternoon here, to see that. And uh, she would have been, um, I think, amazed and, and um, yeah, um, been in an amazing conversation with Sheila uh, to also talk about what does it mean a self-determined artistic uh, life. Yeah, here we see uh, Sheila Gauda in an installation of uh, her large-scale overview exhibition that Matthias just mentioned, titled Remains at the Pirelli Hangar Picocca, and it's actually, it is a hangar. I think it's 15,000 square meters. Yeah, I think it's um, more or less, uh, they say. But uh, to master such a space, it indeed needs a master. 
and uh, seeing images of that show, uh, it also tells us again why you are awarded tonight with the Maria Lasnik Prize. It's to manage such a space with elegance, with sovereignty, um, with ease is really exceptional. It is a very difficult space and to really engage it um, in that way that you do with the series of your installation that you have worked on over the past decades is outstanding. Sheila initially um, grew up in a rural part um, of uh, India. She is born in Bhadravati, in an industrial city in the Karnataka state in India. And uh, she lived in the early years of her life uh, in a more rural part um, of India. And I think this was also, and um, maybe later in the conversation with Hans Ulrich, you will say more about that. You are exposed also to, to the culture, the smell, the colors, and so of India, of, of the culture you live in. And I think it's very interesting how these elements <coughs> later come back also into your work. Um, Sheila uh, studied at a number of schools in India, including the Vishwa Bharati University in San Tinikan, um, which is the school uh, of, that was founded by the Tagore family and got expanded under um, and is maybe more known uh, through the impact that the Nobel laureate uh, in literature, Rabindranath Tagore, had. And um, as an educator there uh, in very influential in terms of modern literature and modern art. And um, I also think it's important to highlight this because of course we, some of us know uh, that you studied also um, painting at um, um, Royal College uh, of Art in London, but I think a school like um, the um, Vishwa Bharati University has been so essential to many great artists and um, you also studied there with um, basically uh, you studied there with really significant and important teachers and who who had a big impact and I think to to really see this formation before you embarked uh, basically to London to continue your studies in painting is quite crucial um, to note. And what is interesting, uh, when Sheila moved back uh, from London to uh, India, she kind of like left painting uh, slowly um, aside. And it is also important to note, very often is mentioned that her installation work, um, it, it's shifting from painting to um, sculpture, but uh, you kind of vehemently deny that. You say you're not a sculptor. And looking uh, through carefully through the work, one also really sees that it's kind of an expansion of painting and of drawing into the three-dimensional to really um, extend this practice. Uh, and you say lines were very crucial for your work to really um, look into composition in space. and. I think it's, uh, if we talk about an expanded notion of painting, I think this is indeed uh, what you do in your practice. We see here an, an image um, um, in the making of, um, of all the people in 2010 and the materialities and on the right side. Uh, we see also uh, Sheila in, this, in the studio. And I think it's very interesting how you also uh, returned in a certain way um, to highlight and also to pay uh, respect to the craftsmanship of the people of your country and also the craftsmanship that is embedded very often in female labor. Um, Dark Room is um, a work that includes uh, tartram sheets, asphalt, and mirrors. Already we see um, the large-scale work, uh, the dimension that the work um, takes in a space, but also um, dark room goes to the materials that is used um, in the roads and in road building and road construction in India. And in an interview, uh, I also read that um, you were very amazed also by um, the um, shelters that the workers also built out of these materials and that um, the shelters that they built is basically determined by the sizes of those um, tartram 
and Tatram sheets, and uh, it's not so much that um, they can build it according to um, what they envision. It's built on basically what the material allows, and it determines also the life. But it's also showing uh, the creativity that the people have working with everyday material and basically using the material that is accessible to them. And I think to transform these materials into this amazing and outstanding works of art, this transformation also gives this material the dignity it deserves. I also read in another interview um, that you want to not be like um, or not refer to that you use and work with poor materials, the everyday materials. And I think it is actually very significant to see that. It is also amazing to see your capacity uh, of abstraction. Of course, the reference also to the minimal artists that we all know from the Western um, art history and how you basically, again, with ease, transform them into your own language, into your own forms of expression and give them a kind of a response based from your uh, upbringing, from your context. And I think in a space like Hanga Pikoka, as we saw in early uh, exhibition spaces like, let's say, the um, Sammlung Krex uh, in, in Schaffhausen, where works by Karl André and other minimalists, uh, Janis Cornelis, Joseph Beuys, found uh, the surrounding from which they also embarked. I think in the Hanga Pikoka, your work also returned to a space of production of everyday life that also plays so much an inspiration in uh, the sources for your work. Another work, uh, Kage Bongara, and I hope I had the year right, because uh, it had uh, multiple, I found multiple years, again, uh, brings in the teardrums, but also it is um, supported by tarpaulins, by, again, everyday material that is used, uh, again, in construction sites, in the small shops that we find all over the world, actually. But it becomes almost like a reference, again, to minimal art, to abstract painting, the color field, and um, again, we see here the elegance that you transform this everyday material into. And uh, here we see an installation view at the MUKA in Antwerp. Again, this award, uh, Maria Lasnik embarked together with the Maria Lasnik Foundation <coughs> on this award to uh, support female artists in their mid-career. And I think it's quite stunning. I mean, I can say that because we are kind of same age that um, we have to be in our 60s to become mid-career as females, while our male colleagues uh, certainly appear in museums in their 40s for the same purpose. But uh, last but not least, also Maria uh, saw the fame uh, of, of her work and saw the big recognition in her later age. And I think it's also sometimes good to have this serenity, to have like uh, this elegance, to have this um, knowledge, this generosity at hand uh, when, when one enter this um, kind of large sta stage of, of the world. But I was quite uh, amazed when I read through um, the CV and the exhibition spaces, I mean, from uh, uh, Sheila, it, it's ranging from, um, of course, she had been exhibited in many uh, galleries, but like basically the who is who of galleries uh, and, and uh, I mean um, public galleries and, and museums, you have been presented over so many years and still um, this is now I think the large um, upcoming first solo show that you will have in Germany after your work that impressed me so much at Documenta 12 in Kassel in 2007. Yeah, and tell him of my pain um, is, was the work that was in a very difficult space. It's the, the last floor of the Museum Fredericianum. And again, I was quite stunned how um, basically 250 meters of cord, of red cord, could create such a presence. And um, yeah, like it's, it's basically taking over this whole floor. It's very interesting, again, um, the and tell him of my pain 
is also kind of a reference of female labor. And it, what one does not see here is like uh, these cords are kind of like interconnected with needles, like I think it was 108 needles that stitched um, all of these cords together and is a reference to all the labor of uh, the women in India. Also the color, the kumkum, um, out of kumkum pigment, which is uh, made of um, turmeric and is also um, a very important uh, spiritual color. It's actually those of you know in India of, of the coating of the women, the dot that you sometimes find in the middle of their face, also indicating um, their state uh, of being married or unmarried um, is this color. So the use of incense, of this cultural codes of, of her country getting transformed in abstract arts, artworks, basically also referencing Western art history. I think this ability to transform and interweave those histories is quite outstanding. Yeah, the work Behold uh, works with another natural material. It is uh, actually hair, interwoven hair that is drawn again to cords. And here you see it um, uh, in this kind of like um, metal holdings like um, put uh, in, into the wall. It's like stairs that go upwards. And I saw an image uh, where you basically um, um, pointed to these hairs used as kind of like ropes that potentially also um, give kind of protection to buses and to trucks in India, like they're like a court at a windshield of those cars and how these are interwoven now to this large amount like of, of ropes that going through the space, again, is quite outstanding. And another work that um, of which I don't have uh, an image now here is also um, making two um, big black squares, also in reference uh, to Malevich, made out of those cords of hair. And I think this connectivity to the tactility of these materials, the smell, the, the haptical, um, is really also giving a very different dimension to what we can do initially in painting. Also, I think um, we see this work now, at, I think it also belongs to Tate Modern in the meantime. And, and again, to have um, artists of this outstanding um, quality in, in um, collections around the world has not been a given. I would say uh, even when we embarked on our careers, it was not a given that we would end up either as curators or as artists in those spaces. So I think a lot has changed in that respect, but also it meant a lot of um, belief in oneself, belief in yourself, and um, the decades basically of sustaining such a practice without getting like, yeah, like kind of as Maria Lasnik always said, like thrown into uh, despair and doubts. It is here is very interesting to see uh, another work uh, stop over in, in um, the first um, Kochi Mutsiris Biennial, and actually it points out the way uh, Kochi Mutsiris has been a very important harbor uh, in the Spice Strait at the Silk Road, and uh, until today uh, Kerala State is very important for the production of spices and is still a very important uh, maritime harbor. And I think the, the pointing of this work that actually has been made in collaboration with Christoph Stortz um, gives a different impression again to the interaction of space and your reaction to each locality and to each space as such. Yeah, how you measure that space and how you reinstall your work with every iteration is also quite, um, one could say, not only mesmerizing but magic. Protest My Son in Marchands, which was an installation at the, seen here as an installation at the Guangzhou Biennial in 2014, also brings another side of um, Sheila's work, photographs that she takes out of everyday media. Um, Sheila refers quite, um, in a very subtle way, I would say, in a very discreet way to the emergencies of our times and also at the violence, the socio-political uh, inequalities, um, the condition that is based on class, divisions on 
racial divisions, on skin color divisions, and the struggle um, people have in that respect. But she never does this in a spectacular way or never in a foregrounding way. It's always in a very modest and in a very humble way. And this afternoon I had a conversation um, uh, with people who work currently also on a film on Sheila and um, we discussed uh, what, what is the impression, what, what makes this work so special, what made it so special entering a space uh, of your work and it's this generosity in which you invite us into the spaces as a viewer. It's always, it's not in that sense participatory. To me, it's an opening, it's an inviting in getting immersed in what you have to tell. Take what we can take, and if we can't take it all, we can take it in portions. It's never demanding us. It's never, in that sense, confrontational. It's always taking us slowly and deeper into what you have to say and what the context and the materials in itself have to say. Another installation, those of whom from 2014 are uh, here to be seen at the biennial, the 31st biennial de Sao Paulo, again shows her reaction to space and how she basically draws the space into her work. And I think it's quite stunning that you embarked actually as a painter and you said you always were very interested in lines, that it's less the color, but nevertheless, the color as a materiality, as a cultural history, I think is very crucial in what you choose. And Hans Ulrich mentioned before when we talked, like, so where are the lines also to Maria Lasnik? And he says it's this also um, the use of aquarels, uh, of watercolor, uh, the notion of this very early stages before the painting, this immediacy. And I think this immediacy, I think, comes even more to the fore in your use of material. Well, if you translate this into the painting, here the materialities is immediately in the space. And as a viewer, we are confronted and like exposed to these materials in a very direct way. You also work um, with cow dung, which again uh, plays a very important role. Uh, cows are sacred in India. The cow dung, the leftover of, of the sacred uh, animals, again becomes a materiality that you transport into another space. And you also say this notion of the dislocation of materials, the abstraction that happens through this dislocation is very crucial to you. So we basically see those materials and then slowly over the time we discover its origins. And to basically embark through this very careful, like almost like in an essay, almost like in a novel, we were getting carefully taken into those histories, I think opens up to us a much deeper encounter also of the culture from which you embarked. Again, I have to say you always refuse um, I would say vehemently to um, be coded as an Indian artist, the exotic that might lie in that. You're an artist and you use the languages that is used globally. You use the, the local materials, you're still based in Bangalore, you walk through your city, you get inspired by an everyday shop, by the materials that might be at a corner, the violet of small metal materials hanging in a store, and then you transform it. So it is embedded in the local of where you work and where you see the everyday, but then you transform it into another materiality that enters the global sphere of the arts. Yeah, kum kum powder, I just mentioned it, um, that comes from Mysore in India is a very important uh, kind of color for social and religious markings in India. And it was this color, like when I saw, I encountered your work first in Documenta 12, uh, in that space. So it was, for you is the form, the line, but for me it was the color that has like, it doesn't leave you and I remember this color and I see it always returning into your work and it's such a strong color that also in that sense reminds us on also on the life of the females and in a patriarchal society in India. Here again we see it and that 
is no lie, uh, here at the uh, Icon Gallery in Birmingham, again confronted with, a, with an image of an everyday, um, of everyday incidents um, as they are communicated through the media. And um, again, this tactility, the, the tactile, the textiles, uh, versus also construction material used in the everyday um, gives another kind of like portal of entrance um, into those everyday happenings. Here we see it again at the Hangar Picoca in another transformation in a much darker space in a more theatrical setting and I think this putting these works like on, on the stage in a theatrical setting is also how you work with the spaces of the museums, of the galleries. They expose and they uh, isolate and highlight these materials to, ex to give them to us to a deeper look, to take them out of their everyday use where, we might, where they might get lost and we oversee them. And I hope now, we, I didn't want to stay too long, I really congratulate again the jury for the selection of Sheila Gauda and I hope uh, we all can return when we see your work actually here and it's uh, such an amazing moment to share this uh, with a female artist and I hope later we really hear from you and Hans Ulrich so much more about your amazing practice. Yeah, congratulations Sheila from my heart.